if it hurts to take two steps at a time, then I'm probably too heavy or I'm overtrained. If I can go down the stairs mm -hmm. and I don't feel pain, then I'm doing something right. <laughs> During this six weeks, what are you going to do with your your calorie level? I mean, because you got to eat a fuck time, right? So it'll probably stay in the six or seven thousand range. Is that what? What is that though? Is that for you moderate or is that high? Pretty normal. So normal. So yeah. you're not pushing it, just yeah. maintenance. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's okay. uh, so it'll be it'll be strict. It'll be uh, most likely no cheat meals. Yeah. Um, and my cheat meal is. Uh, my favorite cheat meal is a Papa Murphy's pizza with a bunch of shit on it. Yeah. And then a pint of haagen ice cream afterward. So we're talking like 4,000 calories. <laughs> that's, um, that's, uh, that's like John Anderson shit, right? John Anderson? Yeah. yeah. He's probably done something similar. John's actually, uh, he's a mentor and a coach of mine. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I love John. Yeah. yeah. No, it sounds like one of his meals you know one of those things he puts in there that one of the things i think people don't really understand with straw man is there's the whole training aspect then there's the strength endurance aspect that's in there but there's the eating aspect where yeah. i don't think they really get that you know because <laughs> there's it's a lot you know it's it, you know i've been working with nathan payton as yeah. far as the diet portion goes um and it's been for me, relatively moderate eating. The five, six, 6,000 calories is pretty easy for me to put down. But we're trying to keep me at, you know, a certain body weight, 140 kilos, 145 kilos. I've gotten a little bit above that lately because I've had too many cheat meals the yes. last couple months. When I'm staying strict on it, it's easy to eat. When I'm trying to gain, you know, when you're pushing eight yeah. or 9,000 calories a day, that's when you're chewing so much it becomes a second job. Yeah. I mean, with two decades doing this, where do you think your optimal weight is? I could always say put 80 pounds on, right? And you could do that, but is that going to help you? Where, say, other straw men, it may help them tremendously to be heavier. You know, is where's, because you're leaner than a lot of the other ones, but height plays a big role in yeah. you know, this whole thing, too. Where if you were 400 pounds, do you think that you would be better or worse? Let's say 330 pounds right now. Yeah. Feels uncomfortable. But if I was 330 pounds after being 350 yeah. pounds, I'd probably feel a lot better. Yes. So what I'm working on right now is uh, I was feeling good at 315. So I pushed to 335 yes. with the intention of going back to 320 to 325 and feeling good there. Yes. So I think I'll be pretty light on my feet at 320. Mm -hmm. Little When I was feeling like shit at 320. A few months ago mm -hmm. if that makes sense it's a weird sport mm -hmm. right because you'll have some of the guys in the 400s yeah. you know that are winning and then other guys i can't think of the the lighter end you know it, many think that the higher body weight is going to be the person that wins but that's not actually always the case yeah you know and it's not event based either you know because it used to be well if they're doing the longer duration events the heavier guys can't do it but, well, now you have the heavier guys that are athletic. That's what I'm saying. That's not the case anymore. You know, it, it might have been the case with what O.D. Wilson, when they were using a barbell on their back running around a track. Yeah. Or whatever that was. Yeah, you stack know. of bricks. Yeah, they're not doing that shit anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's it seems to me like it's more finding that optimal weight and then doing like what you're talking about. You know, push it to over it and then bring it down so you feel better. That's exactly that. That's been my take for for years, and that's what uh, you know. I guess initially it was always gain more, get bigger, get huge, but you can't, at all costs. Yeah, your lower back can't move and you but can't then, breathe. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, I think what we're finding is I'm feeling I feel really good around the 320 mark um, with this recent spike in my weight and dropping down hopefully i feel really good at 325 if i don't feel light on my feet then i'll drop back down to 320 mm -hmm. you know i guess it'll just come down to how how high can i jump how fast can i run what do my feet feel like that'll kind of be the indicator of how much i should weigh at that time what indicators or metrics do you use to be able to determine where you're at in time because you just said how high do you jump and stuff like that is there's say with conjugate when i was powerlifting, there were certain indicators like i if my floor press was this i knew this was this if my close grip incline i knew this was so i had these metrics that if i'm doing these i know i'm here i 
is a gauge. I see what you're saying. You know, so what are the gauges that you use? Because it's more than just the lifts in the gym. There's also the events as well. You know, I, yeah, I didn't, I guess I didn't have exact, uh, predictor numbers. Like yeah. if my floor press is this, then I yeah, know my yeah. bench is going to be this. Um, I knew that if I, if I could jump to a 54 inch box with yeah. no weight vest on, then I'm feeling light on my feet. If I can load a 460 or 500 pound Atlas stone, then I'm flexible and mobile enough and fast enough yes. that, uh, that's where I need to be. Um, if I can get out of bed and my feet don't hurt, then I'm not carrying too much weight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, stairs is another pretty good predictor for me. Um, if it hurts to take two steps at a time, then I'm probably too heavy or I'm overtrained. If I can go down the stairs mm -hmm. and I don't feel pain, then I'm doing something right. You what know? are the markers for where your strength is? Like your strength, <clears throat> say you're in the gym doing something and it's, it's too low. You're like, this is too low. My strength is down. Is there any markers like that? Yeah. Deadlift is a big one. Okay. Deadlift is a big one. So if, uh, if I'm pulling less than 800 and it's feeling heavy, yeah, then I know I'm definitely not in the realm of where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm pulling, you know, I guess eight plates is more like the good marker for me. If eight mm -hmm. plates feels light, then I know I'm where I need to be competition wise. If eight plates feel slow and heavy, then I got some work to do. Is there anything that gauges the upper, the upper body events that you do? You know, for me, Axel was always, if I could clean and press high 300s, 380 or something like that, if that felt easy, then I knew my press was strong. Yeah. Um, log press would be if I'm pressing 350 in the gym, then my press is strong. Um, because my gym lifts don't necessarily carry over to yeah. my competition lifts. Well, that's where that I was going to go with this. If if those things feel where they need to be, do you pull back on them in the gym and focus on other things? So that's something that I have started to figure out lately. <laughs> it, 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 uh, for for most of my career, it was, okay, it's never enough. Yes, this is feeling good, yeah. but it's never enough. So yeah. let's keep the pedal down. We're going to yeah. keep you know full steam ahead. Um now being a little bit smarter and really it comes from the the lessons that i've learned training my athletes mm -hmm. because i have to actually know what i'm talking about in order to teach them and yeah. coach them it has taught me so much about what i should be doing with my own training yes and how to listen to myself for my own programming so yes when i'm when i'm feeling an 800 pound deadlift is light and i can pull it for reps then that's something I would kind of put on a, uh, like a back burner. Like let's just yeah. maintain where we're at and we're going to focus on my overhead press yes. a little bit. If my speed is feeling really good on yoke and farmers, then, um, I would do one in three or four workouts where I go heavy and then I would drop it back to 70% for speed mm -hmm. for the other workouts. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I would do that now is, is, not pedal to the metal all the time. <laughs> when I was competing, there was two phases that I had. Now, I didn't have this big gap like what you had, right? My first phase as a teenager going up before I came to Westside was longer duration. Like, I'm looking three years out. Like, here's where I want to be in three years. Here's where I want to be in three years. Here's where I want to be in three years. And then towards the later end, it was, this is a bonus year. This is a bonus year. It's, a, it's you know, because I can't say there's what four years is going to be too fucked up. Like I just got, but it's a dangerous place too, right? Because you're like, look, if this is the last year, then fuck it. We're doing this, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, kind of yeah. like your one week. I'm just going to take one week, you know, to like get over this, Yeah. you know, <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> and then you end up in this spiral hell where you're sitting four on a, years of misery. four years of fucking darkness. <laughs> <laughs> but then after a while you start to realize, no, wait a minute. The only way I'm going to get those extra years is to economize what I'm doing. Don't do the shit that's going to excessively tear me down so I can't perform, but do the things I need to do to be able to perform so I get, so I, I just make it that year and then yeah. that next year and stuff like that. So it's two, the, those two phases, right? Where you can increase the duration of that phase two by being smarter. And I think you can actually be better, 
right? Because you're not going to yeah. make the mistakes that you made when you're young. The, the gift of being younger is you can make a lot of stupid mistakes and still recover from it. Because <laughs> there's not all that accumulated yeah. damage, you know? Yeah. You can't do that when you're older, but now you have the knowledge, you know, of what that was younger. And working with the clients that you have, like you said, is reinforcing all that. Because it's, it's like I've asked you a couple of times so far today, like, well, what, what did you tell your clients? I'm like, uh, yeah. 